So let's talk about how we can give agents access to knowledge. Could be domain specific, rack systems, how we can also have memory and all that. Basically just how can we give our agents access to a lot of data and then we can go in and do reasoning what data is relevant to retrieve based on the input that we're giving it. So when we're talking about agent knowledge, it's domain specific information that the agent can search at runtime to make better decisions and also provide accurate responses. So this is known as agentic rack. You can also just have the traditional rack, but then we don't really, then we just do retrieval with semantic search, just try to figure out what is relevant. But when we have an agentic rack system, the agent itself based on the input query, act like figures out what is relevant, what information do I need? Could be that it has access to multiple databases, multiple forms of data, it could be multiple data tables within the same database. And then based on the user query, the input that it gets, it figures out, it does the reasoning and figures out what the main specific information is relevant to pull based on this input prompt. And then it goes in and searches the databases. So knowledge is stored in a vector database. Everything needs to be in numbers. We have embedding, so we have text, we both have text as output. We have images that can be converted into text descriptions. This is how the multimodal modalities work. We have text input from the user prompt. Then we have an embedding model that takes that text input and converts it into vector embeddings. So it's basically just an n-dimensional vector containing numbers. We put that into our database. The reason why we use vector databases in agent systems and in large language models is that it's very fast to retrieve compared to traditional vector databases or traditional databases. Because we're working with numbers, we can do the search much faster and also calculate the similarity scores because everything will just be vector calculations. You can even speed it up by having GPUs and all that connected because at the end of the day, vector calculations is just what's happening in AI models. GPUs are optimized for vector calculations pretty much. So it's really fast at doing this retrieval and it's just a cosine similarity or the cosine distance between two vectors, which is similarity search pretty much. Most often that is used and then we put that into a vector database. So we have a pipeline and a data retriever to have full control over the data access and knowledge base search when we use these agentic knowledge approaches. So now we're going to talk about vector databases a bit. I'm going to cover another video where we go into more details with what type of vector databases, how can we set up a vector database and basically just more details about how to apply search retrieval for AI agent systems in the best possible way. There are some search optimized approaches, hybrid approaches and all that, but vector databases, it can be any type of storage. That can be a knowledge base, but vector databases, like any type of storage, they can be a knowledge base pretty much. But we need to convert it into vector embeddings from tech, for example. So that is the best solution for retrieve relevant results from dense information quickly, as I mentioned as well, because we convert it into vectors and it's way faster to match. So when we do this, we need to chunk up our information. Let's say that we have a PDF file, we have 20 pages, then we could probably just chunk it by page, could be per section and so on. So that's data chunking. We're going to cover that in another video where we have different approaches to chunk up our information, documents and all that. So it's just breaking down the knowledge into smaller chunks. So search query return only relevant results, but also faster. Then we can have re-ranking on top of that and all that, but at the end of the day, we just want to chunk up our information so we can retrieve it fast, but also be able to give the source of where do we get our information from. Last language model, they hallucinate and not a lot. So if we don't take that into account, if we don't have a way to act like pull information from somewhere, throw it into our large language model. It uses that to generate a response, but we can also get the sources where it found that information from. Then we can have validation sitting on top of that, checking the sources and the output results and validating if it's correct or not. Then we start to get into way more reliable systems that can be used out there compared to just a traditional rack or basically just a large language model where we try to extract information because if it can't find information, it could act like go out there and hallucinate. We don't want to have that in critical use cases or pretty much in any business use case out there. If we expect one result or one way of formatting it, could be your FAQ, could be your customer service and so on as a chatbot, we never want that to hallucinate. So that's why vector databases, agentic rack pipelines, having multiple databases that we can play around with is so important. So chunk information, we load the knowledge database, so we convert them into vector embeddings, and then we can store those in our vector database. 
Then we can convert it, the user message into an embedding and search for the nearest neighbors of the embedding vectors in our vector DB. There are different methods for looking up our vector embeddings in the database. That's for another video, much more complicated. But at the end of the day, it's just how to retrieve information in a database, give it to our agent so it can use that to generate a response. So the last thing here is agentic search. So this is when you use an agent to iteratively search for information. It just has access to different databases or maybe just one database. And then it iteratively searches through the database to find the most relevant information based on the input query. So the agent searches for the information that it needs based on the request pretty much. The whole process of searching, reasoning, responding is the whole agentic rack pipeline. The reasoning part of it is actually like what makes it agentic compared to just traditional rack because often in traditional rack you just have your input, you search for it and you give a response based on the search but it's not really doing this reasoning step which makes it more agentic but also way more reliable. Semantic search, keyword search, hybrid search, hybrid search where a re is pretty much just a banger. That's the most often used one but also giving you the best results. So it could be that you have some keywords that you want to search for, specific types, could be a date that you want to search for as well. So instead of going through all documents, if the user is basically I want to retrieve some documents from the last week, there's no reason to go through all your documents. That would not be the fastest way. It will also be the mo least efficient way. Let's say you have 10,000 documents and you only want to pull up 10 documents from the last day. There's no reason to go through and do vector search on all 10,000 documents. We can act like just do keyword search first. We pull a subset that we're interested in, and then we can go in in these 10 documents and do rack system. So it basically just goes in and does vector search in those 10 documents. It will be able to pull way more relevant information, but also way faster. So key, that's keyword search. We just search for a specific traditional filtering of our database and search engine. Hybrid search is basically just combining vector search and keyword search. Then you can have a re ranger on top of it, so you generate a first sample of your documents that you find that the agent found out that okay, these are relevant documents. Then we can have a re ranger, could be another agent or the same agent, basically just going over the same task again, re ranking the documents by relevance. So then we can pull the most important and the most relevant documents, then we take those, throw it into a lot length model, and then it generates a response based on that. But make sure to be able to retrieve our documents, we want to have the reasoning step on top of it that makes it agentic. So we add a knowledge base to an agent and behind the scenes, we give the model a tool to search that knowledge pretty much. So that is what agentic rag is. Generate a set of keywords and call tools to retrieve the information. We can add reasoning to agentic rag. So things first, then searches, then analyzes the results. This is the best way to build like agentic rack based systems, but also just agentic systems in general. If you want to access data and all that, we can have databases, we can have tools that search the internet, we can have tools that send email notifications and all that. All these different tools, knowledge bases and so on just need to be combined together. And that's really easy to do with Agno. So to have inside my code editor here, I'm going to use Agno to basically just show you the different knowledge types they have. So, they have pretty much everything covered in here, but right now let's just set up a very basic vector database. We can also have a, a re ranger. So right now we're going to use LanceDB and Cohere re ranger. We have a URL knowledge, so we can just throw in a URL, a link. It's going to pull that all that information, convert that into vector embeddings, put that into our vector database, and then we can retrieve it with an agent. So this is pretty much everything that I went through the slides, but with Agno, it just simplifies it, makes it way easier then it's much more about connecting all these tools giving tool access to the agents and building real large scale software systems around it because that's the hard part one thing is to get it work here in a python script another way is to act like go out there provide business value set it up in a pipeline that works and solve business automations so we have a url knowledge base here that we're going to set up this is the url we're just going to take the acno um, Agno documentation from the agent's markdown file. Then we have our vector database that we connect to it. Right now we're just going to create a temporary uh, folder with a local database, but you can use any database they support. PyCon, PG Vector, Postgres databases with PG Vector, all, all pretty much all the most relevant vector databases out there. So we give it a table name. We're going to use hybrid search so we can use key point or like keywords filtering first and then we do our vector search after 
we're going to set up our embedding model. So we're going to use Cohere Embedder. You can use Open AI embeddings, Gemini embeddings, all of that here with Agno as well. We sped via API key and our re-ranger. So the re-ranger is just going to go in and re-rank the documents after the first retrieval has been done. So this is our knowledge base that we're just going to give access to for our agent. We set up our agent, open AI chat, we get our knowledge equal to our knowledge base. So now it basically just has access to knowledge. We give it access to certain knowledge and set that equal to true. So this is an agentic rack. We have this model here. We give it an input. It's going to reason about what information from our knowledge base is relevant to pull. It's going to re-rank it and then generate a response based on that. So all the slides just boils down to these lines of code with Agno pretty much. So yeah, we have an agent. We have our knowledge base. Our agent has access to the knowledge base. This is the instructions. Include sources in your response. This is very good for most business use cases out there. We want to be able to find or see where did the agents find this resource or this information that it pulled out so it doesn't just hallucinate. It's impossible to trust the system if it's hallucinating, if it's not get, if it's not generating and including the sources in the response. All the search knowledge before answering the question only include the output in your response, no other text. We're going to load our knowledge database here. If you just rerun it after you have run it the first time, we just want to comment it out pretty much because we don't only want to generate our knowledge base once. We can do that in the background and then our agent can just have always access to the database. You can in other programs and all other different software systems, you can update this database and then the agent will pretty much just have access to more and more data and information. So we load our knowledge database and then we just run our agents. What are agents? We said streaming equal to true. So we get the results out while it's running. So Python agent dash knowledge.py. First of all, it's creating the table, act node docs, it's dropping the collection. So we can see it's reading this website, what are agents, it, it, reason, it does the reasoning, figures out, okay, we need to search knowledge database. Let's see, what are AI agents? Agents are AI programs that can operate autonomously, characterized by the following components. And if we go inside the website, so we can see model, tools, instructions, reasoning, knowledge, storage, and agent, we can see that it acts like included the source as well as we ask it to. This is the agent documentation. Let's just try to pull this. It's not working. Let's copy it. Agent markdown. So this is actually what it pulls out from Agnos documentation. We have the model tools instructions, reasoning, knowledge, and storage. And if we just go outside the markdown file, we go inside our agents introduction. We have model tools instructions, reasoning, knowledge, storage, memory. So it's able to pull information from the website here in pretty much no time. It took eight seconds to go through the whole pipeline, take the input, do the reasoning, figure out what tool call to make, go inside the website, pull the information, and then give us a response. This is how we can connect knowledge to our AI agents. We can connect all different types of knowledge bases. You can, you can have multiple databases, multi-vector databases. You can have multiple agents having access to different databases. Then you can have whole teams working together as we went over into other videos. So I'm creating this full playlist here, going through every single thing that you need to know about building AI agent systems, how we can connect all the components together. And then it's much more about building AI software systems around it and provide real business value.